Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So one of the main complaints I see about the new PP Pwn exploit for the PS4 is the requirement of an external device to run the jailbreak. We can use a computer, TV, phone, router, lots of other devices to run the jailbreak, even smaller devices like Raspberry Pis and Luckbox Picos that can be powered by the PS4's USB port to automate the exploit. But there's still external devices that use up an ethernet port in the console and of course a USB port. So in this video I wanted to address these issues by turning the Luckfox Pico into an internal mod chip for the PS4. This has a number of different benefits, one of the main ones being that you don't have to use up a USB port in the console or the ethernet port and also it's completely concealed within the console itself so from the outside you would never know that it wasn't just a normal PS4 and it's about as close as we can get to an untethered exploit right now and it does not require any external devices since it's an internal mod chip it's basically part of the ps4 itself so yeah it makes it easier for transporting the console and being able to run the jailbreak you don't have to take any extra devices with you so yeah lots of benefits here so let's go ahead and get straight into it so the device we're going to use as our mod chip is going to be the luck fox pico so either a regular luck fox pico or a luck fox mini b i would recommend the mini b because it is even smaller than the regular luck fox you should have no trouble finding a space on the inside of the console where you can fit this device in. And most consoles you'll also be able to fit a regular Luxfox Pico in as well, especially the PS4 Pro. But with the Mini B there's definitely no PS4 model that shouldn't be able to accommodate that device. So specifically if you are getting the Luxfox Mini B make sure it is the B variant because it has the internal flash storage which can fit the exploit on so that you do not require an SD card as well. So that is definitely recommended and it should go without saying not to use one of the Luckfox devices that comes with the ethernet port on it because that increases the profile and you need a low profile device to fit inside the PS4. So once you have your Luckfox device whether it's a mini or a regular version what we're going to do is hold down the boot button and plug it into your computer with the USB cable. Once you have it plugged in we need to go ahead and download a few things. We need to download the actual project for the exploit then we need to download the firmware so we go into the build roots folder and we download the firmware but the big change here is that you want to download the firmware for the Luckfox Pico Plus underscore flash. So not the version for the mini or the regular Luckfox Pico as you might expect. We actually want the one for the Pico Plus even though it's not a Pico Plus that we have. So download the firmware for the Luckfox Pico Plus flash version. We also want to download the driver assistant and the SOC toolkit. We'll skim through this here real quick because I've already done a detailed guide which goes over how to set up the Luckfox device with the exploit. If you want a more in-depth guide, check out the previous video which will be linked down in the description. So what we're going to do here is first of all run the driver assistant, get the driver installed, then run the SOC toolkit. You're going to select the firmware that you downloaded for the Pico Plus and then check all of the boxes so that everything's selected and click the download button to flash the firmware onto the Luckfox device. Then we want to open up our network connections in our control panel and unplug the Pico and plug it back into the computer and then a new ethernet device should appear. Right click on that device and go into properties, select internet protocol version 4, double click on that and then you want to enter a static IP address of 172.32.0.100 then just click in the subnet mask and it will autofill for you. Click OK and apply those settings then we're going to open up MOBA Xterm and we're going to go to the session, create a new session. The IP address is 172.32.0.93. Enter a username of root. Click OK. Accept the certificate. And then if it asks you for a password, just enter luckfox, one word. And that will get you logged in, all lowercase. Once you're logged in, you can then rename the project folder with the exploit. Just get rid of the dash main at the end of the folder name. And drag it into MOBA Xterm to copy all of the files over. Once you have the project copied onto the Luckfox device, you can then run the install script by copying the command from the GitHub repo and pasting it into Mobile X term, and then press enter to run the final command, which will run the setup script. So with the setup script, we want to enter our firmware version, which is going to be E for 11.0 in my case, because I'm on 11.0 firmware. And then we'll type in Y for yes to apply. This is another important step here where it asks you if you want to shut down the Luckfox Pico after successfully loading the jailbreak. So we'll say Y for yes and press enter. 
and then we want to select what type of exploit we want to use. I just use option B, which is compatible with all PS4 models. So we'll press enter on that and then confirm the settings and type in Y and press enter to apply. And that will get the whole exploit up and running on your Luxbox Pico. So the next thing to do is to unplug it and get everything set up for the hardware. So there is actually already a project as I was kind of researching this to see about doing this project, I saw that somebody had already gone ahead and done their own version of it and documented it. So I'll leave this down in the video description if you want to reference it. There's some good information in here. I am going to change things a little bit from the way that it was done on here just to make it a little bit easier. So I'm using a PS4 Pro. So we want to get the plastic cover off first of all and then get all of the screws taken out from the metal cover that is over the motherboard. So get rid of all of those screws. I think they're all T8 or T9 screws. And then there's a bunch of them that are also Phillips screws as well. So get rid of all of those screws and then get rid of the Wi-Fi antenna cables as well. Unplug all of those and you'll be able to lift the metal plate off. You may also need to take out the hard drive. And then if we zoom in here on the Ethernet port itself, you can see it right there. This is the back side of the motherboard. So in the original GitHub project, you can see they solder the wires directly to the legs of the Ethernet port. These legs are very close to each other. It's easy to bridge them together. It's kind of hard to get these wires soldered to the legs. On top of that, the Ethernet port is on the front side of the motherboard. In order to access this, we'd have to take apart the console further to the point where we actually remove the power supply and separate the motherboard from the heatsink which obviously is not ideal. So a much easier way to do this is to just solder the wires to these little pads that are on the underside of the Ethernet port that we have access to right now. So that is going to be a lot easier than soldering the wires to the individual legs and we don't have to open up the console any further. So that's what I'm going to do here. So you actually only need four wires from the Ethernet port for PPPoE. You need TXD minus, TXD plus, and RxD minus and RxD plus. So those correspond to TXN and TXP and RxN and RxP on your Luxfox Pico. So if you look on the Luxfox Pico, you will see those corresponding pads on the bottom of the chip. And that's all that's required for communication between the Luxfox device and the Ethernet port for PPPoE. From what I can tell, the slim PS4 models, the Ethernet port looks pretty much identical, the same points. Uh, it is a little bit different for fat model PS4s. I don't have exact details on those, but I'll try and put up uh, some images if I can on the solder points. But just take those with a grain of salt because I haven't been able to actually test that on a fat model PS4. But those should be roughly the points that need to be soldered for those models too. And also we need to power the Luxfox Pico. We don't wanna power it from the USB. We wanna power it directly from the console so that we're not using up a USB port on the console. So we can do this by essentially taking power from the existing USB ports. So either the one at the back, which is the handy one on a PS4 Pro because it's right next to the ethernet port, but if you're not using a PS4 Pro, you can just use one of the front USB ports instead. But as you can see, this back USB port that's next to our Ethernet port, we've got a ground connection and our VBUS connection for our power. All we need to do is basically solder wires from those to our Luxbox Pico to power it. So all in all, six wires that you're going to need to connect from the motherboard to the Luxbox Pico. So this is the wire that I'm using here for this. So what we're going to do is first of all add some flux onto each of the points for the Ethernet port, all four, and then just add a little bit of extra solder onto each one of those pads. Once we've done that, we can then attach each wire one by one for TXN, TXP, and then RXN and RXP. And then once we have those wires attached, we can then of course clean up the flux with some rubbing alcohol. And then we just need to add the two wires for powering the device from our USB connection so we just add a little bit of extra solder onto those two pads and then add our wire for our VBUS and ground connection. And then just add some captain tape to keep those wires secure. Okay, so again, we're going to change things a little bit from the project on GitHub. In that particular project, they actually route the wires underneath, but it would require opening up the console further. So instead, we're just going to route the wires through the holes in the metal casing which will be a lot easier. And I'm just routing a different wire through each hole so I know which one is for TXP, TXN, RXN, etc. 
and of course our V-Bus and our ground. So we route the wires through the case. So now we just need to get the Luck Fox Pico prepared by adding some flux onto those pads and then adding some solder onto the pads as well. So for TXP, TXN, RXP and RXN as well as V-Bus and a ground connection. So we need to add some extra solder there and then attach the corresponding wires from the motherboard to those pads. So you just got to get everything prepared there. Once we have that all wired up, the next step is to just route the wires across the top of the case uh, over to the corner where there's some room to mount the Luckfox device where it's not going to touch any other components. So you just want to find a space in the console where you're, where you're going to be able to fit that device in there. And what I'm going to do is just take a command strip and cut it down to size and put that over the Luckfox Pico and use that command strip to stick it down onto that area on the console so it's not going to move. It's not going to accidentally move and short something. So we're just going to go ahead and stick that down with a command strip and we should be all good to go. Now, one of the issues that I have done here is that I have the USB port kind of pointing the wrong way, which means I can't plug in the USB port and it might be a good idea just to, you know, mount it maybe in the opposite direction so that there's enough room to plug in a USB-C cable in case you want to you know, connect it up to the computer again to update the exploit just by plugging in the USB cable to the computer. So that's always an option. And once everything's mounted on there, we can go ahead and put the case back on. I've already gone ahead and put all the screws in. So I'll just go ahead and add the plastic casing, the plastic cover on the top and get it all pushed down and clipped in. And that is it. We finally have our console done. So a really easy mod chip to install overall, just six wires and you don't even have to open up the console very much to get access to the solder points. So very, very easy. So at this point, we are all good to go. We have the mod chip completely concealed in the console. All we have to do, of course, is set up our network settings on the console to use PPPoE by going to our network settings, set up an internet connection using a LAN cable. Then we select custom and we choose PPPoE, enter a user ID and password, it can be anything and then click next and do automatic, automatic, and do not use proxy. So if we reboot the console, so you can see this from a fresh boot, the first thing you'll notice when you turn on the console is you'll get the LAN cable not connected message initially, uh, because the Luckfox Pico, I think, is still booting at that point. And then it should start trying to run the exploits. So every now and then you'll see a message saying can't connect to the network, which means that it is running the exploit. And eventually, once it runs successfully, you will get the a luck foxed message and then gold hen assuming you have the gold hen payload on the hard drive or on a usb drive that's plugged into the console and you'll get the gold hen exploit running and you'll then have the console jailbroken so that is how we get things all set up here and now that the jailbreak is loaded you can switch to wi-fi to get connected up to the internet or you can connect an ethernet cable now that the jailbreak has loaded successfully the luck fox is no longer communicating with the console so you can plug in an ethernet cable and get connected to the internet that way and it shouldn't be an issue. You just set up your internet connection for LAN cable using an easy setup this time instead of PPPoE and get it connected up to the internet. Now the problem comes in when you're trying to use an ethernet cable to connect to the internet at the same time as the Luckfox device is still trying to communicate with the console to run the jailbreak. So if the jailbreak's not running yet, and it's trying to jailbreak it and you still have an ethernet cable plugged into a router or another device that's trying to provide it an internet connection then there's going to be a conflict where neither one is going to be able to communicate with the console properly so the fix for this is to obviously just not have the ethernet cable plugged in when it's trying to jailbreak once the jailbreak is done you can then plug in the ethernet cable and get connected to the internet and in my case i have the ps4 connected to the computer with the ethernet cable so the computer is sharing the internet connection with the ps4 so for me, I can just disable the network adapter for the Ethernet when it's trying to jailbreak so that the computer is not trying to communicate with it when it's trying to do the jailbreak. And then once the jailbreak is successful and the Luckfox Pico shuts down, I can then re-enable that network adapter and get the console connected back to the Internet. So that is one potential downside with this method right now is that you have to wait for the jailbreak to complete before enabling the Ethernet. So again, this is a very easy mod chip to install, very easy to set this up. You know, as long as you can do some basic soldering, it really is that easy six wires between the motherboard and the chip. That's all you got to do. Find it somewhere, find somewhere in the console that you can put the chip where it's not going to, you know, make contact with anything else, any other components, and you are good to go. Very, very easy. 
And again, the benefits are clear. You don't have to have any additional devices connected to your console. It just looks like a normal console. You'd never be able to tell that it has a essentially a mod chip in it now. And you'll be able to run the jailbreak without any external devices. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll hopefully see you guys once again in the next video.